Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Swimmer and Show podcast. It's been a pretty hectic week here at We Swim Run HQ. Uh, we'd organised a trail marathon and half distance a couple of Saturdays ago, which was excellent in Abu Dhabi. And just last Saturday, we had the Cool Mile in Tallyclin, Cool Mile Swim, which is a swim in 10.5 degree water. Very chilled. Uh, and yeah, we've got Swim Liverpool, the venue for the Eliminator. That's getting up to speed with the summer schedule. So yeah, it's been hectic. We didn't have a chance to record last week. However, this week's episode is a double whammy in a way because we have Gary Pavitt, founder of Gritty Rascals Events and also a big part in British Swim Run and the UK ranking system, which we will dive into very soon. Before I forget though, big shout out to everyone who enjoyed the last few episodes thanks for the comments and some of your mem- memories from uh, some of the swim swim run scotland events uh, we had stuart mckinnis on last week and it was great uh, hearing some memories from the select few who took on those epic events and, and quite a few people didn't even realize there were any swim run events in scotland uh, or didn't certainly weren't aware of some of the the hell's hop and the lock gulock carry on um, so yeah, they did happen. It, Scotland were leading the way, uh, along with Ben at Brecker 2015, and that carried on for a few years. Nothing, nothing set for 2024, but I'm sure Swim Run will return to Scotland soon. Uh, so before I um, ramble on too much in the intro, <laughs> let's get on with this week's episode, Gary. Gritty Rascals events and the brains behind the UK ranking system of British Swim Run. Okay, so we have Gary here from Gritty Rascal events. How are you doing, Gary? Yeah, very good. Thanks, Mike. And you? I'm good. I'm good. It's, uh, well, I keep saying every week it's warming up. Uh, <laughs> it keeps warming up and then dropping a bit. But, um, I think it's it's maybe the end of end of uh, well, the beginning of summer is not too far away. If I'm, I'm looking out my window and it, it just feels like spring is finally here, um, the the trees are sort of like really greening up and there's blossom on them and the it just the sky's blue today here, which it hasn't nice. been blue very often recently. I know, I know you're a bit further west and maybe you've got. Not such good weather today, but it just feels like it's just coming into the start of the yeah. nicer weather when you want to be outside a lot more. So uh, definitely, uh, yeah. So exciting year, twenty twenty four. Gary's got. Uh, so you held the um, Brecker. Well, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you held Coniston up in the Lake District uh, in twenty twenty three, and you've introduced Gower this year. So um, we'll have a little chat about those but before we do gary what's um what was your background before you found swim run uh um so my background is i i my i guess my career was in um it uh, you know in early days i used to do software development and then i got bored of um i'm quite a gregarious and competitive person um, and i got I got bored of just being in the software development lab, just seeing the same people. It was in a sleepy little village. It was, I mean, it was quite good work. I had quite a good job. I just didn't get out and see enough people, and I felt like I'd hit a bit of the ceiling. So I took a job rolling out systems um, that were police fingerprint systems. And, you know, it was for this little uh, – it was actually a sort of part of a really big uh, corporate company called Ampex. They invented video recording um, yeah. and then had loads of spin-off technologies off the back of that. So I was responsible for rolling out all these systems to sort of county police force headquarters, getting them up, getting them live, um, embedding the systems. And then, um, you know, then it was a, I was got myself in a situation where I was the only person who could really look after these systems. The, the sort of parent company got into a bit of financial difficulty and I ended up taking all of those contracts away and setting up a, a, an IT services business that looked after those and we did document management. So we grew that, it was quite successful, and eventually we sold it. 
Um, and then I started business mentoring. So I, helping other small and medium sized business owners go through the, the growing pains of, you know, taking on more staff, uh, getting past the startup and into actually it's a real business that needs systems and processes and better management sort of structures and experience and all that kind of thing. So I've, I've, that's what I've been doing for the, probably the last 20 years, working with sort of small and medium sized businesses that, that either want to grow or sometimes they're in trouble and they need some help getting out of the trouble. Right. Um, and then I've got a few sort of interests of, of my own as well. So, so that's my sort of background in, in terms of sports and the other kind of stuff that I like to do. Um, quite like being outdoors. So I've done quite, a, I've done like the coast to coast walk and I quite like to do stuff my own way. So I did that solo just after foot and mouth. Um, oh yeah. So I, I walked it the opposite way to, to the way most people do, which, um, just suited my timings and everything but it was quite an interesting experience um, because not so many people walking with you in the same direction um, mm-hmm. and it was interesting because you know I was using the Wainwright book that sort of gives you all the sort of you know where to go but if you're trying to read it backwards it just doesn't make sense <laughs> often you know it's that you might say you know look for the church spire or something at the end of the field and there's a gate there but if you're at the gate there isn't a church spire telling you where so I got lost a few times and um, but I, I, you know I just really enjoyed it being out you know in yeah. in all weathers um it was very quiet because it was after foot and mouth so a lot of the paths hadn't really sort of come back I did it early that year um so I, I like doing stuff like that I love being out on the water I like I like boats. It doesn't really matter what kind of boat, but I like the quieter ones, whether it's sailing or canoe or something like that. Um, play a fair bit of squash and badminton and stuff like that. I used to run a right. little bit, but not. Okay. It's probably not my. Certainly on the distance. If I liked running, it was more of a sprint rather than a um, than an endurance race. So. Uh, okay. So that that's my sort okay. of sporting. Or the, my hobbies and things like that. I guess. Yeah. So a good range there, uh, and we'll let that IT background. I guess we'll 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 talk about the the UK rankings and uh, yeah. and British swim run as well. That was a big topic. Um, well, might be a big topic in the future. But just on that foot and mouth, that was about was that two thousand and one, sometime. Uh, I think it was two thousand one. Yeah. 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 And the way it was, how far, just for the guys that don't listen, we have quite a lot of American and Swedish listeners. Um, what's the coast to coast? What distance is that? So it's, I think it's, if you don't get lost, and <laughs> there aren't too many diversions, it's about uh, 192 miles, I think. Although the route changes sometimes to, to sort of avoid erosion and, and things like that. So it can, it can right. be a bit longer, right? Uh, it was probably a bit over 200 when, when I'd sort of done them all. Um, I think. Right, good, a good distance it goes, then. It goes through um, like three national parks, I think. So, the, obviously, the Lake District, um, the um, the, the oh, I can't remember what North York. Now. Anyway, yeah. the North Yorks Moors yeah. and yeah. and the Yorkshire Dales, I think. So, yeah. nearly all of it's right out in the hills, um, and you know, I. I I didn't use if you do if you do the normal way you can get people to carry your bags and take you to a sort of predetermined stop and everything these days um, mm. but nobody was doing it that route so I was just carrying a backpack and basically working out where I could stop and trying to find somewhere to to stop in a pub or a bed and breakfast at the end of the day or something like that so you're the kind of walks that you do are somewhat limited by where there's a village you know on your on your path yeah. so yeah i quite like i quite liked all the randomness of who you might bump into because if you want to talk to somebody you've got to make the effort to to just chat to someone in the evening in the pub or as you meet them along the way or something like that um i, I quite like i quite like all of that really yeah no that's brilliant um so moving on to 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 swim run the first uh race you organized last year up in coniston the lake district there mm-hmm. um how did you well what how did you kind of decide to take that on as as an event well it, i had quite a, i know quite a few people who 
were involved with Brecca in one way or another. So, um, you know, from some of the walking I do, I've got friends that were participants in Brecca races over the years. Um, so I've got a few different groups of friends that have actually done the swim runs. Um, and then I used to know a guy who helped on the delivery side of um, Brecca as well. He helped them with the race delivery. So I got to know him and, you know, other people through that. And then when, when Brecker were going through their problems, I he asked, you know, he knew my sort of business mentoring background um, and asked if I could have a look and see if it was salvageable. So I, I had a look. I'd, I'd seen like the investment pack and everything that they'd done prior to all of that. So I, I knew I knew a bit about it, but not tons about it really. Um, and when when I looked, I think it was it was too late really. Um, so. I'm sure I'm not the only person that that had a look. And I think one of the other swim run event organizers also did the same. Um, but I, I couldn't see a way forward for them. Um, and I think I introduced the insolvency practitioner to them in the end. And then when we were sort of going around all of that, sort of crossed my mind, well, should I try and buy it? Um, and I, I looked at it and, and I, I just, I was a bit too nervous of all of the bad feeling, the ill feeling that there was quite a lot of it. You know, I looked on the Facebook groups and the forums, and you know, a lot of people were really upset that nobody was getting back to people. People had lost money and everything. And I just thought, no, I, I don't want to do that. Um, what I did eventually do was was buy all of the, the physical assets from Brecker um, and took the view that we'd try and resurrect some of the races um and i spent a lot of time in the lake district and that that was the one that resonated with me most um so thought i would have a go um which was probably a bit stupid really because i don't really know much about it i've never had an events business before um i didn't really didn't have any contacts apart from the odd ones um fortunately i knew people that knew people so that was that was quite good but it was it was quite a challenging event. I think even when Brecker used to do it, they used to split the event into two. They used to do the long course and a shorter course on different days. Mm. Um, and we added a third course at late notice as well. So we've got like a, a long course, their old shorter course, and then an even shorter course. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think I really understood all the logistics of that at the end. It, it made it a really complex event to put on i think but i mean it was a it was a baptism of fire and it all it worked out um yeah so and it, it was a really rewarding thing to do to be honest you know um seeing people at the end and how much they enjoyed it and you sort of realize what you've you've kind of, kind of done for them I, I found that really uplifting and rewarding and you know i, I learned a lot actually on on the day really um, yeah so yeah, I was, I was keen to do it again. And when, when I guess the original plan was was to try and resurrect more of the races. So you know, bite off bits at a time, and even maybe have our own little gritty rascals swim run championships around the UK. So you know, with you know, even registered a domain for that. So the idea was to have one in England, one in Scotland, one in Wales, and try and get one going in Ireland as well. And then we could call it a, like a little mini swim run UK series, um, have a little championships all of our own. Um, and I, I, that was probably a bit too big to bite off in one or two years, I think. So we'd, I'd still like to get that going. So we've brought back Gower this year. Um, yeah. I think if. Um, if we'd had as many people as Brecker used to get last year at Coniston, then then maybe we would have been a bit more ambitious. But um, you know, we kind of broke even, but but not much better than that, really. Mm-hmm. And so it's there's there's a lot to, a lot of time and effort and money that's at, at stake, really. Yeah, um, you'll you'll know because you you do the same things. So yeah, 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 and it's it takes time and. Um... Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. But well done for bringing it back. And when when you put the extra distance on, I was like, oh, that's going to be a a big day. <laughs> so um, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, well. People were asking us um, for it. People were asking us for a shorter route, and we only 
really decided to just do it, I think, right at the end of July. So we didn't have very many people come to it. But, I mean, at the end, you've just got, you know, there's another 15 podium places or whatever all, all of a sudden that you've just got to try and manage. And yeah, and it just, just made it so much more complicated. And I don't think I'd really appreciated how difficult that would be when – you know, and, yeah. until I saw it kind of unfolding around me, but it yeah. was it was good fun, um, yeah. and it just made it more accessible to a lot more people as well, and and that was um, a big part of it, I think. You know, the the people that do the forty five k race, they they know what they're doing. That you know, you're not not many people come to a race like that never having done one, one before. You, you might get the old the, the odd ultra runner that would do that, but you know the a shorter race you know pretty much anybody could could turn up and and have a go even i could probably do that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> good stuff good stuff um so that's uh the 22nd of uh, september this year yeah 22nd of september we're, yeah. and uh we're and the running. gawa is oh sorry yeah and gawa's on the 29th of june 29th of june yeah cool and that's a it's a shorter the longer course is a shorter one than it used to be isn't it we're doing um we wanted to do the original longer course that goes around worm's head but we didn't get the final permissions until quite late in the day um and i i just felt it's perhaps too much of a of a risk uh, of the unknown you know the water safety is such an expensive thing if you don't get enough people to justify that extra water safety for the for the long course if you don't get many people i figured that you know people who do the longer courses probably plan them a bit bit further out and i just didn't feel that we had the the run run in to sort of actually sign up enough people and, and feel comfortable that that would would work financially so i think we'll bring that back next next year i'm i'm, I'm you know, ninety nine point nine percent certain that we'll have that. But this year, I think um, try and take a smaller bite and uh, make that work, be good, um, do it well, and hopefully we'll, we'll get more people again next year. Cool, cool. And um, and the Loch Loch Lomond and uh, is that Scotland on the agenda for the future? It, it is. I, I've had conversations with people up in Scotland. And I would like to to bring it back, whether it's Loch Lomond or or somewhere else. I've I've spoken to some of the people that did the Brecker Lomond race, and um, I know there were some challenges with that. It 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 kind of appeals because it's so close to Glasgow, so it's accessible. Um, but there's also challenges because Loch Lomond's quite busy as a as a mm. you know body of water. Um, so I, I don't know them. There's other places that I like the the look of as well. I don't really want to sort of share where they all are, and I, but you sort of think that would make a really spectacular course. But then you sort of think, well, how's everybody going to get there? And if they get there, where are they going to stay? So I, I haven't I haven't finalised something for next year, but it's definitely on the cards. It's a it's a strong consideration for next year. Yeah, Scott, we had uh, Stuart McInnes last last time on the podcast yeah there was some great i'm probably going to reach out to him and and have a chat with him about whether you know there's a an opportunity to collaborate on something like that you know one of the other people that i've spoken to already about a venue they do not swim run events but other events you know uh there and we we talked about collaborating with them but i still i just think they're a bit too tucked out of the way really Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll see what happens with that. So, British Swim Run then uh, is yeah. is uh, so Gary uh, last year appro- approached most, I think, all of the UK race organisers as many as he could. Anyway, uh, I think he managed all and collated the results from the twenty twenty three races and uh, set up a ranking system, a pilot ranking system, really for the UK um, mm-hmm. and. It's really great. It's live. It's live online, britishswimrun.org, and you can yeah. search via different distance tiers and all that carry on. Um, 
so yeah, what's um, so it's it's now it's it's for 2024. It's going to be the the real the real deal, if you like. It's not pilot anymore. And yeah. How do, do people have to register? How does this all work? So you can go to BritishSwimRun.org. There's um, a sign up form. You can get a registration ID for free. Um, you then um, all of the race organisers that I've spoken to, and I, I think that includes everyone except for the um, Swim Run Festival that or the. Uh, I can't remember what they're called. A now. wild uh, running, yeah, the wild rather. wild yeah. running um, festival. Yeah. They're the only people I think that I've not spoken to who are organising a swim run this year. So I, I probably do need to reach out to them. But everybody else has agreed to, um, you know, take take a, a the British Swim Run registration ID um, and then share that back to us with the results. Um, and then we'll load it up into the system and then the tables will be live. So um, the, the rankings are sort of organised into four distance tiers, which are based around the marathon distance, really. We've got the long one is up to the marathon distance and we've called ultra above that. And then the, the ones below that half. So, uh, you know, 21K and like 11 or 12K or something like that for the the shorter tiers um you can get points as an individual and also if you race as a team so again if you if you want to race as a team you have to register the team and your team will get a, a registration id um the whole idea i think really was to just get something everybody could talk about encourage participation um have something in the uk that for people that are really competitive they they want to sort of claim their space at the top or whatever they can do that um but it reward you know it does reward participation so the pilot system you know shows the people that did the most races generally are at the top of the rankings so um i don't know where it'll lead whether there'll be award ceremonies in the future or um you know whether we have a sort of like a, a uk championship set of races where you know maybe there's a final that allows people who've qualified through getting enough points to to, to enter um, i don't know i think all of those things would be great developments for swim run in the uk um and that that was really what i, I think it was all about i wanted to see something that when i looked at swim run from the outside it seemed like lots of small event organizers and interested parties, but th- there wasn't really much coordination or 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 anything that that really drove it. And I looked at other sports like you know like triathlon or, or Ironman or you know whatever it is, and they all seem so much bigger and you know more organized and um, like I, you can see it developing faster in other countries and i thought but there's no reason why that shouldn't be the same in the uk so I tried quite hard to get other event organizers and interested parties on board with a sort of view to doing that but it I don't i don't know that everybody's on exactly the same pathway i think there's a lot of differences between people that want to go a bit faster and a bit slower keep it you know quite raw and adventurous um, so there's you have to sort of bring a lot of people with you and different ideas yeah yeah just to uh for clarity i've been working with gary and uh, nikki bailey from as keen as mustard and david drahane from uh, studland swim run i swim run uh, putting on studland we've been kind of chatting to each other over the few months and, and along with um, other, specifically about the rankings really and, and all the other organisers have been feeding into that and there's been lots of meetings. And to be fair, Gary, you've been quite you know, a catalyst for, for that and I think what you've done is great uh, off your own back, background you. there. Um, and I think it is, it is and hopefully will be a positive thing for sure. Uh, the work, there's always... And I, I, you know, I come from a, a raw adventure background, if you like, uh, but I also recognise the coordination and, and, and things like UK championships and just the ranking system. It's not about being, yeah, 
some people like to be near the top and, and some people just want to be on it and, and some yeah. people don't give a damn whether they're on it or not, which is, and it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, I think, um, it is, it is inclusive. And, and as you say, you get point, even if you finish last, if you finish a swim run race in the UK, um, you'll get 30 points on this system, right. I believe. Is that right? Again? Yeah. That's yeah, so right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. if you did a, you know, if anybody out there is listening and they did a, a swim run last year, um, they should be able to find themselves actually in the ranking tables that we put on the website for, for last year. Some people, you know, there's people on here that you, you've had on, on the podcast before that rank very high because they've done yeah. quite a few of them. Um, but it's, you know, it's nice. I've, I've got friends that did our swim run last year and, you know, you can go and find them, see, see them in the ranking tables and everything. I, I think it's fun. Yeah, I do. I do. I will, I'll just look at the 2023 overall results. We've got our good friend Simon Griffiths from Outdoor yeah. Swimmer at the top. <laughs> uh, he raced six races last year in the UK. I'm sure he probably did a couple abroad. Uh, but yeah, so Simon's at the top of the table in terms of the males. And then Lucy Young is uh, female, top female, with five yeah. races. Um, I'm just looking at the points. Yeah, so that makes sense. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's all there, guys. BritishSwimRun.org. There's not that much there so it's not one of these websites where you get a website you get lost on there's rankings events so you can find your events yeah uh they're all listed on the table format um with all the different distances there is a google map not all of them are populated on that yet uh, but no. they are listed uh on the kind of table format and then you can register uh, for a free british swim run id and there's a little section of partner if you want to partner with British Swim Run. Uh, I expect there'll be costs yeah. for, for I mean, doing that would this be, kind of thing. That would be great if we could get some some sponsors and partners mm. that would help sort of fund it. I mean, at the moment, I I pretty much funded it all myself. Um, mm. But I, I don't see it as a me thing. You know, the whole idea mm-hmm. of British Swim Run would is that it would be a, a sort of like a charitable organization that's, you know, there to promote and develop the the sport for everybody in the UK. So although although I've developed it, I'm, I'm not really um, trying to be possessive of it mm-hmm. in, in any way, shape or form. I, I think everybody who's a stakeholder in Swim Run, whether it's, you know, other event organizers or, swim run media or you know shops or clubs or you know anybody individuals everybody should be able to have a sort of a say in in how swim run develops in the uk if they want to and i'm quite keen to to encourage that really um but it, yeah it would be great if we could get people that would you know support the funding of it and help drive it forward a, a little bit um, yeah tried to sort of limit the costs so far but it's um uh, yeah we'll, we'll see where we get to with it yeah yeah so just on um we'll just have a look at the tier distances quickly i've got a couple of things uh yeah. to ask later but the uh, so we've got i mean these are just guidelines aren't they for the for the, we've discussed about the distances in detail and it's quite hard as you know with height gain if there's any tidal flow or river flow, you know, swim run, as we've discussed before on the podcast, uh, it's hard to kind of classify. But just as a, a ballpark figure, we've got the short is classified as less than 10K. The yeah. middle is 10K to 21K. The long is 21.1 to 42.1. And the ultra is anything over 42.1. Um, yeah, not the sexiest names, are they? <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> and, um, but um, it's, it's just, I suppose it's a starting place. I, I feel like the ultra should be a bit bigger, but we've, we've talked about that. And it's it's, yeah. it's just somewhere to kind of start, really, isn't it? And It is. And it's well, probably... If, if you made it much longer than that, there wouldn't be any ultra races. So there almost wouldn't be a, 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 t- <laughs> a yeah. tier there. Um, I think there's there's probably two this year. I think the Jersey yeah. and yeah. the Coniston race. Um, and, yeah, I, when, when I first looked at the rankings, I... You know, you'll know this because we've talked about it, but I I tried to factor in all of those different things, you know, like the 
the the height gain, the elevation, the the terrain, the you know the, the swim distances, and just to sort of get you know you, you can have a very easy ish swim run, or you can have some really challenging terrain and swims, and and this simple system doesn't really differentiate any of those. So I don't I don't think it's a very good sort of determination of how difficult a swim run is obviously there's the the distance element to it but but you know as i think anybody involved in swim run knows this you know some of them are much much harder than others just because of the terrain or the conditions on the day or whatever it might be um it, people i spoke to just felt this was the simplest way yeah. to get something off the ground yeah initially. yeah definitely and it's not don't, we don't need to take the the tears too seriously either <laughs> uh, just, as you say it's, it gets it off the ground and and uh it's it's a good place to start i'm just having a look at still at the rankings we've got um fred newton in fourth place yeah our good friend from swimrun.com uh he did five races in the uk sarah king just below him alan scott piers valance so it's all up there guys it's quite good um uh, so get your register for your id for 2024 um I'll, i've got mine already i'm number four hopefully i'll get to do some races um <laughs> what races so, uh, are you so with the ra- well yeah i'm starting to i'm starting to hone in uh it's been difficult to, to schedule as you know with a lot of my summer stuff um but i'm i'm leaning towards um doing the first mad hatter one on the 25th of may <laughs> uh the hokey Koki st austria We'll see about the period after that. Um, I'm looking at doing Gower, okay. um, 29th of June. Clashes, we'll clashes with Engadin. Clashes with Engadin, but um, I have done Engadin before, and I've done Gower before, but not you know, back in the day. And uh, mm-hmm. so this shorter distance, I'm penciled in, and then Gothenburg, hoping to do. Um, and then we'll see what happens, see what else I can squeeze in at the end of the year. So definitely two in the UK. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to try actually to do, I think I'm going to put things in place at Liverpool in the Eliminator where I can take part. Uh, Are you? Yeah, because it's quite a compact course, as you probably know. Uh, and it's a bit different to other swim runs in terms of the scale um, of, of the course. So, yeah. It should work, so that'll be a good so start. What are you going to do? Are you, are you going to? Because is that an eliminator style? Yeah, the eliminator. Yeah, so it's a. So what, a what's lap. the plan then? To yeah. sort of go in, get get knocked out first, and then you can be at the end for the. <laughs> well, I definitely won't last the whole way. I, yeah. I'm hoping to to make it to lap four, um, and then there's two more laps. I, I definitely won't make it to lap six. Um, so I'd, I'd like to do a few laps, um, and then we'll see. I might. Is it, uh, with Tally Clint swim run, I might also be able to take part because I've been. I know Michael Lamel took part in the Isles of Silly once, not the full course, but the, yeah. the sprints when it used to be on the Saturday and then the, the full course used to be on the Sunday, uh, depending on the conditions. So yeah, and I know a few. There's there's a, there's a well known race across the Mers. It was not called a race because they want people to. Well, yeah, it is a race, though, isn't it? Uh, swim across the Mersey. It's always a race. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But um, and the organizer of that great guy, he he does it every year, and he gets in last. He's obviously a very good, a good swimmer, uh, but it's great to see uh, the organizer getting in. Uh, and if if it's very, I mean, it's almost impossible to do on on most races. But I think, yeah, I can't even envisage a time when I would. <laughs> I would feel I could do that. I've got, yeah. um, my, I think my wife and my children are both going to do it um, this oh. year. So that will be quite nice. They, you know, it's all quite new to them, but they're That's starting brilliant. sort of with, with sort of like training and stuff. So I think, um, yeah, but I, I don't, I think it'll be a while before. I think I'll probably have to do somebody else's swim run, but I don't, I don't, I don't really envisage a time when I'll be able to do mine yet. Yeah. No, well, good. Your wife and kids is that's good. Get them. Are they going to go for Coniston or Gower? Or um, I think they were all going to do Coniston, um, yeah. and I think they'll do the short course to start off with them. I'm hoping to have quite a few friends up there this year. Actually, there's a when I first started talking about it, no, it's the same. I guess across the UK, hardly anybody's ever heard of it. Doesn't know what it is. They they just don't 
get it. Um, and it was really only when they saw all the pictures and and everything from Coniston last year, they it was just like really blown away by, you know, how it came across. And they were like, oh yeah, no, I, I want to have a go at that. That looks yeah. amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully yeah, we, they we definitely they get as much from it as they hope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. We're, we're definitely still getting the word out on swim run. I mean, in our world, swim run's been around for a while, but this almost everyone else doesn't see that. <laughs> we still get no. the same the same questions. Like, um, I organised a trail marathon a couple of weekends ago, and a couple of athletic looking chaps, you know, fit runners. They said they felt they were too scared to do a swim run. They could, you know, they could swim and run. And um, but yeah, I guess that's a not hangover, but a kind of a legacy from the olden days of of uh, like early two thousand and yeah, whenever's of some of the imagery that came out. But now there's such shorter courses. Um, so yeah, it's that balance, and that's with the British Swim Run ranking system. It it, it encapsulates the whole range of distances and and courses. So you know, it's it is really for anyone who can swim and run. Um, I think I think that's true. I think that you know, there's so many, you know, I, I guess sort of introductory type events. You know, I think the, the shortest one is around five k or something mm-hmm. this yeah. this summer. Mm-hmm. So you know, most people could could do that. Um, I think even even our sort of like ten k races, the the sort of time that you've got to do it is is so. I, I think. Broadly, if you can swim the distance, you can get round our short courses because the the timings are set up so you don't you don't really get a cut off time that's relevant unless you're doing the really long race. Um, yeah. Because we've got to have all the water safety in place. We want everybody to get round. So you know, I had people asking me about the cut off times if they were doing the sprint race, and I said, well, you know, really, you could. You could take a picnic and have two picnics along the way, um, and still make it round and probably walk most of it if you if that's what you wanted to do. And that, yeah. you know, I think that's still the case. You could, you know, kilometers an hour is like you know maybe two kilometers an hour if you really push it to the limits of, of the cutoff times. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's actually the case with Tally Clint swim run as well. I think a couple of people did walk. Uh, in the end did a bit of jogging but so yeah it's it is it's available to everyone and and we've got the pointy end as well that you know the fast guys and and mm. the long distances and all the challenging stuff um but there there's definitely are some races with more serious cutoffs for sure in the uk particularly the coastal ones where tides is yeah. a factor so just yeah have a look at the websites and, and do a little bit of research but you'll find something for you i think just um Coming back to the ID, so the registration is free for 2024. But as you say, you, you've funded this from your, your own pocket at the moment. Mm-hmm. Do you th- and I'm expecting. Well, how how do you think that's going to pan out? If assuming there might be a sponsor or something, but well, I'm hoping. We, we've talked about this before. I'm um, we're hoping that British Swim Run will sort of become a, a, a registered. Not for profit charity, um, and when that it's taken a bit longer to get off the ground than we'd hoped. We, we've had a few challenges with um, incorporating the charity from the charity commission and everything. So, but once once that's done, what I'd like to do is engage with a, a much wider sort of section of the swim run community, and you know, I don't want to make it like a, a Gary thing or a Gritty Rascals thing. It, I think it should be run by the people who are best placed to actually promote and develop swim run in the UK. So I'd really welcome, you know, a sort of like a subgroup that would come up with a funding model. Obviously, it's going to survive. It needs to be able to fund itself. And I personally, I don't care whether that's people paying a, a membership fee that gives them, you know, some benefits that, you know, I've, I've been a member of other sort of organisations like the RYA or British Canoe Union or whatever, and you get something for your membership fee, and that that's one model. It could be that the event organisers charge a small premium on, on entries to be affiliated. It could be that it gets covered by sponsors, or I don't, I don't, I don't really 
mind what that model is really and i don't think it should be for me to dictate it i think it would be good for other people to be able to have a say and help develop that whether that's you know event organizers or the swim run you know populace at large yeah yeah so it's up for debate really isn't it at this stage it is, yeah yeah and a couple a couple of the i think everyone's uh all the organizers that appreciates what what's um what you're trying to do, what we're trying to do. Um, and, but a couple are, are concerned that there's there's not enough participants uh, in the UK to maybe sustain it. But you've got to start somewhere, haven't you? That's what, that kind of the way I see it. But how do you feel about the numbers-wise? Because you, know, you look at a triathlon, any other sport, it's kind of established, you've got tens of thousands. And we've, what did we have? Two and a half thousand participants across all the entries last year. Yeah, it might even be a little bit less than that, I think. Um, I, could, I could have a quick look, but it's probably not the right thing to do now. But I, I think it was about 2,000. I'm I'm hoping that will grow. I mean, the, the marketing that I've done for my events and I know other people are doing is, you know, there's a lot of outreach to people that may or may not have heard of Swim Run in the past. Um, so I personally feel confident that it will start growing again what that you know in five years time whether that 2000 that are participating has grown into 10,000 or 2100 I'm, I'm not really sure but I'm hoping yeah. it will be much closer to the you know 10,000 end than the 2000 end yeah yeah because it'll be interesting at the end of the year won't it to, to review uh I'm sure it will go up from 2000 for sure uh, it probably it might already be nearly there with um, across the UK with all the entries. So, uh, so yeah, I guess you've, we've got to start somewhere with it. Um, yeah, and 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 see and yeah, involve as well, anyone who's interested in swim run, participating, uh, just supporting it. You know, to get involved and and feed into the. To yeah, the I'd, I'd welcome I any sort of positive contributions that that people can make. Whether you know if they've got experience of running a, a non not-for-profit or they, they feel they could help with with any aspect of, of running it or doing some some i don't know what it would be um but i'm i'm well i've massively welcomed that i certainly didn't want to do everything all myself um no. <laughs> I did, you know there's there's enough to be getting on with all, you know running my events business and and the other stuff that i do for other people as well uh, yeah definitely so just coming back to the UK championships, I know you just just to clarify a slight conflict that might be happening. So you obviously Gritty Rascals, uh the mm -hmm. organised events and you mentioned a, like a mini series within Gritty Rascals potentially yeah. and potentially a UK championships. Would I mean I guess with the UK championships that would be a you know, spread across the organisers would kind of decide as a group on Yeah. So I think um I think I think my original idea when I started Gritty Rascals was that we would have our own little mini series like I outlined at the beginning. And then um, shortly after we launched Coniston, I did get invited to uh, a forum that includes lots of other event organisers. And, and at, at that point, I thought, OK, well, I'm going to defocus on that. There's there's clearly some collaboration going on already and I've gone down this path um, with the, the whole British swim run and the, the rankings and, and things. So, you know, if we, if we get a, a race in each country or, or whatever, I'm, I'm still open to the idea of that. I still like the idea of it, whether it fits into British swim run or if it's our own thing or a collaboration with other sort of events so i don't i don't really know I've, I've pretty much parked it i still like the idea of having a, a series where people might want to enter each race in the series and you know it's a, I don't know, more like formula one and the grand prix or something like that you, you know that would be sort of very clear that, that that's what it is but I, it's not properly formulated yet and i and i like i say i've pushed it down the road really yeah so it could be 
I mean, <clears throat> it could be like a, a My Swim Run Championships format for the UK specifically, where like British Swim Run is yeah, and yeah, outside body, if you like, and the, and the the championships get spread around the UK and yeah, that kind of yeah. I'm very open to anything, really. I'm 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 more than happy to cl- collaborate with all of the other event organisers and come up with something that works for everyone. I think we've all got you know, things that we can bring. I mean, one of the things that I was really sort of pleasantly surprised actually when I started Chris through our schools was, was just how supportive other event organisers that you would think of as being competitors broadly were that, you know, people lent us things that, you know, saved us an awful lot of money, like um, the Southeast Swim Run series lent us um, race vests that they'd been given by... Um, as keen as mustard, so Nikki and Chelsea, um, you know, yeah. that saved us a fortune on yeah. on a whole load of vests that we could we could just use. People, you know, yourself, other people helped us with uh, information gaps that you know, knowledge that I didn't really have to sort of get get it all off the ground. So, you know, I, I was really struck by what a nice community of of people it is in in you know the UK swim run event organizers um, group that every every nearly everybody was supportive and uh, helpful in, in one way or another yeah yeah and i think that comes from the great thing about swim run in the uk at the moment and hopefully forever is uh, the organizers are you know have, have taken part in uh, a lot of events and, and a, a lot of the organizers started or have been a big part of their kind of swim run journey was with the brecker races um so we want we want them to come back these races and we yeah. know how hard it is obviously to organize them and uh and yeah so it's, yes i think that is a really valid point that everyone's just trying to support each other through and inevitably that yeah we are competitors but um a healthy competition hopefully and um and collaborators as well. So it's, yeah, I think it is really positive at the moment and hopefully yeah, it I, carries on. I, I don't, I think of us all as being competitors very, very loosely. In mm. you know, obviously we are in some respects, you know, each individual swim run athlete has got only so many pounds that they're going to be prepared to spend. But I think there's a, much bigger opportunity which is that we all spread the word and get more and more people involved and and i think that's what will actually drive us all to be successful is growing the number of people that want to do swim runs by making it interesting making people aware of it i think you know just chasing the same pounds from the same people year in year out i don't think that's going to do it i think you've got to grow um, participation and, and that's what I see you know part of British swim runs um, journey uh, being about but also you know I think that's what all of us should be doing as, as swim run organizers I've, I've pushed people towards other events you know some of the, my friends did um, other events last year as I sort of suggested they would be a good one to sort of just go and go and try a short one you know um, yeah it's sort of like a, a learning journey really definitely Definitely, and um, and yeah, the potential for swim run participation is massive. Um, <laughs> so come on, guys. <laughs> so um, one thing, when I've informally chatted to participants uh, in a, several races, and um, about the idea of a national governing body for swim run in the UK, is immediate, usually immediate negativity uh because they associate a governing body with rules regulations paperwork bureaucracy and things negative things from perhaps other sports mm-hmm. uh, but it's not about that and and well it's it's not at all about that um and i just to clarify guys <laughs> i think yeah that i think that that's not what, what swim run is about it's a you know i we talked about rules and things before. I mean, I I think there should be multiple runs and multiple swims, and you know, you start with what you or you finish with what you start. Uh, I've got views on the environment that it should be kind to the environment, and have as little impact as possible. Um, 
I think that for event organizers, there should be minimum safety standards. You know, I, I, I know that the origins of the sport, there probably wasn't any water safety whatsoever, you know, um, or, or very limited water safety, but I don't think that's possible really in in the uk and you know if you're an organized event organizer um and i think i think that's perhaps one of the things that, that's a benefit of doing a swim run race you can you can go out into an environment and and you know swim across some lakes that knowing that there's some support and safety that you just can't go and do if you're you know if you're doing your own saturday morning dip in coniston and you want to swim to the other side if there's no one around i don't think that's anywhere near as safe as having you know all the, the safety boats and support and cover and everything that's in place so i think it's enabling people to get out and yeah use these environments in a way they just don't have and i, I think that should be in place but after that mm. i'm yeah you no know, i don't see it becoming like british triathlon i know um, it should be an adventure yeah 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 all the all the events I've done in the UK have been, in terms of safety, have been felt very comfortable, and um, and and there's been some abroad that um, I felt comfortable, but I could see where you might not feel comfortable. So yeah, with the UK, I think we're on top of things. Um, one thing that might come up in the future, uh, I guess, will possibly be to do with water temperature. Uh, I I still feel it's um, the race organisers are best place to to make decisions on that in terms of wetsuits skins and and things eventually well if you were wore an arc vig for example or a vig air which is the um it's very lightweight it's almost like a tri suit with a tiny bit of neoprene yeah. on the front and very thin if you are accepting that as a wetsuit when you've you know in in certain temperatures there might be issues uh, so i think that's it for the future um and i don't really it's like it's yeah one that's not going to be addressed i don't think in the next few years um but it's it's it is on the mind of organizers and all the organizers as ever are looking at conditions on the day water temps longer swim wind chill you know when how long the runs all that carry on is is going on behind the scenes yes it's it's difficult i'm i'm probably not best qualified to talk about that because you know it's not you know I've not, I've not tried them all. I've not had that experience. I'd probably look to the people that are doing a lot of swim runs and, you know, the, if, if you're using one type of, you know, wetsuit that is, is very thin and you're at the front of the field and you're a, a really strong swimmer, that's probably a very different um, scenario to someone who's, you know really struggling on their their first one and how do you differentiate between the experience levels of people to be able to decide and everything it's um i don't i don't think all the answers are very easy really and i, I don't think i'd be best mm. qualified to to answer those so um and that that's where you know perhaps a wider participation in an organization like british swim run can make much better informed you know decisions or viewpoints on that um yeah yeah but there is there is an element of uh, participation responsibility, um, mm-hmm. and we've seen and that's what makes it the adventure as well, isn't yeah. it? You yeah, know, it's not. I don't think it should be so controlled. There shouldn't be no risk. I don't think mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, it'll all be on a track and in a swimming pool. You know that that and that's not what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. And um, okay, so. Are you doing a swim run this year, Gary? I, I haven't committed to, but I think I'm probably going to do a swim run. Um, I, I think, I think I need to go and experience it for myself. So I haven't picked one. Uh, it won't be one of the longer ones, uh, but I, yeah, I, I can see myself doing one. Good stuff. I'll look out for you. You're more than welcome at any of ours. Okay, great. Uh, Liverpool, Tally Clean. Uh, but yeah check it out guys britishswimrun.org uh the rankings events rankings for 2023 you can register for free for 2024 and um yeah get involved gary thank you very much for coming on thank you for having me it's been a pleasure and uh good luck with i might see you in i might see you in gower if not before okay well, i hope so yeah good stuff thanks a lot
Okay, thank you, Mike. Okay, so hopefully that's shone some light on the ranking system and British Swim Run and indeed Gritty Rascal events. So, yeah, check it out, britishswimrun.org. If you want to see your points from last year, if you took part in a race in the UK, uh, it's all up there. And if you want your points to be published this year, uh, then register for a swim run ID with britishswimrun.org. Yeah, and if you can help, grow the sport or have got any experience with this kind of thing and want to help out then do get in touch there's a contact uh, link on the website bridgeswimrun.org and i'm sure we'd all appreciate any help that can be given indeed now let's have a look at the events i'm just going to rattle them off here guys so don't feel like you have to listen of course (laughs) but uh, it it mentions on the website uh, affiliated races now don't worry basically all of the races affiliated what it means is gary's had a chat with the organizer we're kind of on the same page the only rule really in terms of qualifying as a swim run is a minimum of two swims minimum of two runs start with or finish with what you start with you know you know the score so i'm just going to rattle them off Uh, it'll take a while because there's I think there's 25 different events in the UK, but these, you can all gain points at these. And even if you come last, but you finish, you get a minimum of 30 points. Okay. So you can get, you can have an off day and then, you know, do better the next event you enter and climb up the table. So uh, 18th of May, start of the season, Swim Run Liverpool, the Eliminator, organized by We Swim Run, of course. 19th of May, down in Surrey, South East Swim Run, I've got one at 5k. Uh, 25th of May, Hokey Cokey St. Austell Bay in Cornwall. They've got a couple of distances. That's organised by Mad Hatter, of course. Then the 1st of June, Tally Clen Swim Run, organised by We Swim Run in Snowdonia National Park. Arori, as the Welsh name is, the, the proper name, we could say. Now, 8th of June, we've got Neen Park. have got several distances, uh, organised by As Keen As Mustard in Neen Park. Check it out. And also, there's a clash, the first clash of the season, 8th of June, Great North. Swim Run have got a few distances going on at Windermere. 15th of June, another clash. In fact, I think every weekend from the 1st of June until the 13th of July, it's pretty much got a swim run. So, yeah, Clamberis, uh, organised by Love Swim Run. I've got a couple of distances on the 15th of June. And along with Studland Swim Run in Bournemouth, now they're sold out now. So, there you go, 15th of June as well. Uh, they've got three distances. Then down in Kingston, Thames Young Mariners, 5K and a 2K. I think that's the shortest swim run in the whole of the UK this year. A 2K on the 23rd of June, Sunday. Then Swim Run Gower, which I mentioned with Gary there, 29th of June, down in Swansea area. Then 30th of June, Graff and Water, uh, as keen as mustard, have got a few distances on that date. 13th of July, the next clash. Uh, a big one, Hokey Cokey, Roseland, organised by Mad Hatter, of course. They've got three distances, and they're clashing with the Wales Swim Run in Pembrokeshire, uh, organised by Activity Wales Events. Sometimes these clashes are unavoidable, unavoidable particularly the coastal ones. With the, there's a lot of factors with the coastal swim runs, um, and then St Mary's in on the Isles of Scilly. Speaking of coastal, uh, that's coming back. The Silly 60 uh, organization ran by uh, Wes is uh, that's the 30th of August on the Friday. They've got a short one, then they've got a long, the, the, the big one, the Archipelago Swim Run, is on the Sunday, the 1st of September. In between all that, there's the Rocky Horror Swim Run on the 31st of August in Devon, organized by Wild Running. Stay with me, we've just got September to go now. 7th of September, the Gribbin, organized by Mad Hatter Sports, a couple of distances. 8th of September is a big day in the swim run world. There's a bit of a clash as well. There's a Longside Lake down down in the southeast. Uh, they've got another 2K and a 5K. We've got Dovey X Swim Run here in Abu Dhabi, organised by We Swim Run. That's a My Swim Run Championships qualifier event. And also on that day, there's the Buell Water, organised by As Keen As Mustard. And they've got three distances going on. So, yeah, another clash. 
But there we go. Jersey on the 14th of September with the longest swim run in the UK, 53 kilometres, organised by 3D events. Swiftly followed by 15th of September, Lock to Lock Swim Run, organised by Swim Oxford in Oxford there. 22nd of September, Coniston, as we mentioned. Unfortunately, I can't make it. Um, sorry, Gary. I've got. I would be there, but I've got a clash. I've got an event. I'm organising down here. The Dovey 13 kilometres swim and the Dovey Aquaflon 26 kilometres. Uh, but hopefully next year there'll be no clash there. And the last one on the calendar, 29th of September, the Neen Swim Run Survivor, which is a similar to the the start of the season up in Liverpool. Uh, that's a lap kind of eliminated type survivor thing. So great start and end to the season and. I mean, the some of the distances, it's just such a range from two kilometres to 53 kilometres and such a range of geography and, and, and natural environments, urban environments, there's all sorts. So, yeah, hopefully, guys, we will see you on the start line very soon. Happy training. <laughs>